welcome back to Living History with Ted Goldsboro and our guest today, General Julius Becton, a Laura Marin graduate who lives in Virginia but was nice enough to come up for these. We have a two-day event coming up and we'll, I hope we'll get to that. So General Becton, here we are and we're at Laura Marin High School and the year's about, during the Second World War, it's about 1942, three, four. Yep. And, uh, in 1944, there's a page from our yearbook called the Incaridian, and I don't know what that stands for. I, I have no idea, <laughs> and I, I always screw up the pronunciation, so I just say yearbook. Yeah. Um, but in the 1944 yearbook, uh, there's a notation down here. It says names listed of April the 1st, April 1944, and what these were were the Lormer and high school graduates who were killed in, in the service. And I was a kid and I look at all these, and this is just part of a list. Yep. It's just so awful, so tragic, so sad to look at how many people were killed in the Second World War. Uh, James B. McKenzie happened to have lived on my street in Arbroath, and I remember when he, he was killed. Do you recognize any of the names there, perchance, or on the back side? I'm looking for one specific name on here, Vincent, but... Uh, well, of course, he might not have been deceased yeah. at, in 44. That's probably true. Okay. No, I do not recognize okay. the names. Okay, okay. Um, I had asked General Becton on email, as I look through the yearbook and I look through the student newspaper called the Marionite, I saw very few photos socially of African Americans, and I wondered if, if you'd help me understand why that happened. Well, I can't give you the reason why it may have happened, but I never went to a high school dance. We never encouraged to. Mm. Wasn't criticized for not going, so mm -hmm. we just didn't go. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain activities, sports, that we didn't participate in. We weren't told you couldn't do it, but no one encourages. Mm -hmm. Golf, uh, fencing, archery. Wrestling. Uh, no, we wrestled. Mm -hmm. But I'm mentioning sports that you are sort of, if there's a upper class and a middle class mm -hmm. and a lower mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. that may be why. Okay. When you were growing up in Bryn Mawr, was there, you, you went to Parvin's for ice cream, but were there any other places, any other stores, any other businesses where you thought maybe blacks weren't welcome? Well, I, I know that uh, blacks were not welcome in the bars. Of course, I wasn't old enough to go there. But, but your dad My couldn't? father and the... Shame. Uh, Sylvan Theater, which is now Bryn Mawr Theater, mm -hmm. as I saw just a couple of hours ago driving by it, mm -hmm. uh, they had a policy that the black Americans sat on the front left side. And uh, whenever you come to the occasion where the fill movies house get start filling up, you can move any place you want to, but you start oh, off that oh, way. Oh, I see. Uh, hmm. I think that the, um, there are certain clothing stores that you were not encouraged to come in and try on clothes. Mm -hmm. You, you want to mm -hmm. try it on before mm -hmm. you buy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Particularly women. Uh, mm -hmm. But there was not any out and out uh, sentiment, uh, sentiments of being, no, you can't mm -hmm. do it. But there are certain things we knew what we could or could not do. Mm -hmm. What about restaurants? There were restaurants in, in uh, not necessarily in Bryn Mawr, but uh, Horn and Hardox, if you go there. Mm -hmm. You've heard of Horn and Hardox? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the kind of place you could go. Okay. Um, what about a local? Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I cannot remember going into a restaurant, being invited in. My father uh, was a janitor, and we would drive to Philadelphia. Oh, on oh. his day off, which was Thursday. Oh. And that's the only time we go to a restaurant. I see. 
I never had a problem because I never had a desire to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had places over in White Hall, which is on the uh, west side, southwest side mm -hmm. of Bryn Mawr that mm -hmm. uh, catered to black Americans. Okay. What about barbershop? Same? Uh, barbershop, I didn't have a problem because my father cut my hair. Yes, yes. And the answer is, you go to barber on, in our case, he was on Prospect Avenue and Warner Avenue, black American. Okay. And that was it. You all were born, you and your brother were born in Bryn Mawr Hospital? We were both born in Bryn Mawr Hospital. So there was no problem there? I, I was told I was born there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, no, there was yes, no problem yes, there. Yes. So if you cut your finger and went to the emergency room, they you got took treated. you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, in <laughs> I didn't discover this until a few years ago, but the coaches for each sport kept an annual summary of the season, and they would tell who the varsity players were and what the scores were and the opponents and if they went on to uh, districts and regions and states. Uh, this happens to be uh, football in 42-43, and I presume yep. there's, a, there's a Becton on there somewhere. Yep. And did you, you had a good season in, in we football. Had, I had three good seasons. <laughs> in the three years I played football, we lost one, tied one, oh. and won everything else. Gee, many. We were pretty good. And track, too. Track. And you were the state champion in track. You I was the state broad champion jump, I think. broad jump, now yeah. called long jump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a football yep. piece here about you in 1943. And then there was a banquet in 1944 in January. So it was the 43 season, and that was your senior yes. year. Uh, it gets confusing because your the yearbook has to be uh, they would not include our... That's right. You have to be the team. next year. Yep. So uh, I guess this was from the 44 Four. year book, and they're talking yep. about 43. Okay, and they mentioned uh, General Becton in here. It didn't say General Becton. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it says Julius Becton. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I presume your muscles, is that uh, you? That, that is me. That's, oh. uh, I'm not too <laughs> sure why he took that picture, why he put it like he did. But yeah, right. Uh, that is me. <laughs> okay. And uh, is that uh, Marzuka? Marzuka. Okay. And, uh, and I think you're down here maybe? Yep. I'm okay. right there next to Bill Sapp. Okay. And, uh, and you talk about uh, Bob Williams? Yes. Right there. Oh, 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 let me see that. Okay. Can you, let's, ta let's talk about Bob Williams. Okay. Okay. He's a, as you said, he's my best man. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He um, lived at our house in, in Bryn Mawr Court for a year because his family were outside of the township. And he needed a township address because he was a good student, super student, as a matter of fact. And Laura Marion had, in that time, I guess they still have, pretty good academics. And so he, mom said, just come on over. Mm -hmm. And so one of, the first per one of the first projects I did when I got to Muhlenberg, I wrote about my mother's third son. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's mm -hmm. the way we family looked at him. Mm -hmm. But wasn't that sweet of your parents to take well, him in? He's a... He's quite a guy. Mm. He's then, can, and, can you now. tell me about him and his well, career? And he's a what would be called now a Tuskegee Airman. Mm. He went to Tuskegee flight school, uh, earned his wings, and then because there needed people going to become bombardiers or navigators, he became a bombardier, a mm. bombardier, bombardier navigator. Mm. Uh, was in one of the f first composite units, other than the the uh, fighter aircraft that used to protect the bombers en route to mm -hmm. their target. Like an escort? Say again? Like an escort? That's exactly what he was. Okay. Now, for the general public, could you tell me who the Tuskegee Airmen were and where they were? Uh, Tuskegee is an institute in Alabama, land-grant school. And when the war started, as a matter of fact, before the war started, they had started teaching aviation. Um, 
And who was that? Well, and a person who <laughs> was in the chief person, <laughs> as a fellow I just mentioned, <laughs> Chief Anderson. He happened to be from Bryn Mawr. <laughs> uh, he um, made a reputation for himself. And the biggest thing he did was to convince the military that blacks could fly. And when Mrs. Roosevelt visited Tuskegee, she wanted to be taken up in the aircraft. And he volunteered to drive her up, fly mm -hmm, her up. Mm -hmm. Her security screamed about it. <laughs> uh, the wise, well, people from Washington heard about it. <laughs> you can't do that. And she said, I am going to fly. Good. <laughs> and he is going to fly. He could be the pilot. And Chief Anderson was the one that took her into, into the air. And it made a lot of difference to it black people. It made a big people. difference because it proved that he could fly. Mm -hmm. In those days, there were certain attitudes that said black can't do this, can't do that. Mm -hmm. There was a memorandum in 1925 put out by the Army War College that was a horrible indictment of what blacks could not do. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't, they don't have any initiative, they cannot work with complica uh, complicated equipment, they have no leadership ability, mm -hmm. and um, as a matter of fact, I think tomorrow mm -hmm. when I'm having a comment or two with students, I'll be reading a portion of that, mm -hmm. because it, uh, mm -hmm. we know better now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of us knew better then. But the attitudes were there that so be it. Mm -hmm. uh, General Buckner, I hate to say this, but our time is up for this segment. Well, but, you but, talk too much. But we're, <laughs> yeah, but we're going to be continuing. We're going to go into a part two. Good. So thank you very much for being with us. And uh, we will uh, wrap up. This is Ted Goldsboro with Living History. We're talking to General Julius Becton. <laughs>